everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. I'm back with Jason, hey. and today we're going to be checking out Fallout Wasteland Warfare from Modifius. This is um, the, uh, I guess, how do I put it? The tabletop adaptation of everybody's favorite post-nuclear wasteland apocalypse tabletop RPG. Um, and it's a translation directly of everything that you love about the video game by Modifius into a 28 millimeter or 32 millimeter, I don't know, whatever today's standard war gaming scale is <laughs> directly from the video game. It's got a scale. It's got a scale. It's yeah. it's all in scale with itself. I, I can't tell what scale things are anymore though. I just don't even try. Um, I think it's advertised as 32. Does it say on the box? Like, are we just dumb enough that we didn't look? It doesn't say. It might say on the box. Hang on. It says 32 millimeter scale right out of the box. <laughs> I can read. It's fine. Um, and uh, John and Chris at Modifius were nice enough to send along uh, this copy of the PVC starter set for us to check out and give it a try. I've, I've already got um, an order for the rest of the stuff coming in, uh, which you guys were kind enough to do a t shirt drive for, which was super cool. Um, but it's got a whole bunch of components in it that are in the second, like, not second wave, but the second wave of the first wave of shipping. So we'll be waiting on that stuff too. So right now, we have a starter set. We're going to play uh, the Tutorial st uh, scenario called Troubled Beginnings, which is basically like a story scenario where Nora wakes up, the sole survivor, and she's just stumbled out of the vault. Um, and uh, she meets Dogmeat for the first time, accompanied by a couple of settlers. And uh, some super mutants are doing terrible things, like emptying That's out traps, <laughs> <laughs> pulling body parts out of giant, terrible traps. Um, and you guys interrupt them, basically, and a firefight happens. So we'll go, go through like the basic mechanics of the game for the first turn, um, show you how everything works. This won't be everything, because there are sort of, this is falling kind of in the GW's new format of different ways to play. There's battle mode, which I'm happy to say is actually completely downloadable. So this is actually a printout from the website, and this gives you all of your caps, values, and missions for like the battle play, which you'll see on the channel later on. There's campaign play, where you build a settlement, manage your guys, or an experience, do like campaign stuff. Um, and then there's the narrative play, where you go through missions that are sort of story driven. So things that like happen in the video game, you'll get to go, and there's sort of like set forces and or you know example forces that you can use and that's what we're using right now which is trouble beginning so we're doing some narrative stuff to show you the mechanics and you'll see other modes of play later on and then finally there's ai play it can be played alone you can actually play it by yourself with like evil critters running around um, and the opposing force acting on an ai program too so very interesting lots of ways to play the game basically whatever floats your boat in playing this type of miniature game you have an option, which I think is super duper cool. So out of the box right now, you can play the narrative and the um, campaign play. The battle mode with all the like cap values is online and downloadable, which is nice because none of these cards or components are ever going to go basically irrelevant. So like there's never like changing point values won't make any of the accessories not be correct anymore. They're always going to be correct and they can adjust or balance or change or add new factions stuff as they go through free downloads on the Medivius website, which I'll link below so you can go and check it out. So yeah, let's take a look at the forces. We'll go through the basic rules and we'll get this underway. All right, so here's all our components. Now the table, the train, you guys have seen all this stuff before. This is my own personal collection of post-apocalyptica. Um, this is none of the actual fallout train that's being produced officially through Medivius, um, but it's completely appropriate for what we're doing. So it's what we're using. Now you get um, this right here, which is a two player starter. It comes with Team Super Mutant, which is a brute with a sledgehammer, a couple of Super Mutant hounds who are super cool. See, this is all painted by me. Um, and then two more Super Mutants with a, a aviator. He's got an aviator caps, so he's a slightly better shooter and some pipe pistols. Uh, and then you get just a regular Super Mutant with a pipe rifle. Uh, and then finally, these are all in PVC. So this is the, you can see they're in bright like green plastic and they've been just primed and painted by me. Uh, you get some human settlers. Now this guy actually will fight for both teams. He's either an enslaved tech or a free tech, which is a guy that the super mutants keep around to like push buttons and fix things. Um, but right now he's just sitting with the survivors. You get the sole survivor. So you get uh, Nora in this case and dog meat. And the bases are beautiful. The, this one actually has like some caps on it, a new Coca Cola bottle. And you get a little German Shepherd there, dog meat. You get your tech. And you get some settlers. So these are all settlers. She actually could be either a settler or you could actually use her as um, a member of the railroad too. Because you got a little railroad lantern on her. And then finally you get a suit of power armor, which you're supposed to paint as Brotherhood of Steel. But I actually painted it as a US scavenge suit of power armor because I wanted to be able to use it for my soul survivors later on. Because you can equip the soul survivor with like a T60 suit of power armor. And I figured this would be handier to paint this way. I have the Brotherhood box set coming, which means I'll be able to paint up lots of those too. Um, and then finally you get a death cloth <laughs> because you need some big bad waste baddie 
And what better big bad waist baddie than the biggest baddest waist baddie of them all, which is the Deathclaw. Uh, again, painted up by me with a variety of airbrushing, washing, and paint brushing. Uh, and he'll be using other snares and stuff too. So that's your core components. And then you get all this many tokens. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very symbol heavy game, uh, which is great for translation purposes, but it does have a bit of a learning curve. The only ones you really have to worry about for this, like, let's play, this is radiation damage, this is regular damage, this is an objective, this is ready, this is activated, and this is reactive. So he's, someone's basically taken a quick action to be able to interrupt an opposing action and, and react afterwards. And you only gain these quick actions through skill checks. Then you have all your special dice. This is the stat deck uh, stick twice. It looks like a D20, but it's actually a D10. So it's a D20 halved, and then it also has some special symbology. This is a one that gives you a quick action, so you could go into reactive. This is a critical success that also gives you a crit and fills up your crit meter. And sorry, there is one more token you need to see, which is the critical token. Um, and that allows you to activate special powers for your weapons on the other half. Uh, and then the X is an auto fail, but some auto fails also give you a quick action because they're not terrible. And then whatever the rest of it is, is numbers. Now everything is because you're special and attempt to roll under a stat. So you can see our super mutant, strength six, perception four, endurance six, charisma three, intelligence three, agility five, luck three, and you're trying to roll equal to or under on your stat die. So if this super mutant was trying to hit you with a sledgehammer, he's strength six, he would roll the die, roll an 80 fails, roll a, X, he totally fails, but gets a quick action. Roll an X, he fails. Oh my god, he's a terrible super mutant. He rolls a six, so he gets it. He actually succeeds. And then you have your special attack dice. And all your weapons, like the bolt action bite rifle, will roll these in addition to the stat die to do something. So yellow is usually about breaking armor. These little broken helmets reduce armor. Or trigger specials, which is the lantern, or the duke of colas. Uh, the numbers affect your roll, so it makes you roll lower. So if I roll minus one, whatever I roll on the stat die becomes lower. Um, and then this is an extra damage. This would add to whatever the damage type is, which is the bottom. That's two physical damage. This blue dice is all about special junk. So it gets you nuclear explosions and stars and nuclear coals and stuff. And then the black is all about damage and a little bit of uh, stat decrease and armor breaks. And the green is all about hitting better. Lots of minuses. So when you look at the bolt action rifle, for instance, it does a lot of damage at long range, or sorry, the bolt action pipe rifle. The blue range is a lot of damage, but in green range, it is more accurate and more likely to break armor. So this one's optimal range would be green, not blue. Now, when you fill up your critical meter, you can spend critical points, three in this case, to use the altered stat line here instead. Still two damage, but I get to add those dice to whatever range I'm at. Dice, let's talk about ranges. Now this uses, it's a little X-wingy, which means it has colored ranges. You can just measure inches if you want, but it's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 inch bands. Um, and once you memorize the colors, it becomes easier to kind of visualize. So for instance, Mr. The Superman here moves four inches per action or charges six inches per action. Uh, this is eight inch range plus 10 inch range, so 18 inch range total. It, it takes, like I said, it takes some time to absorb, but once you've actually got it down, it's pretty easy and intuitive. We got it after about a game and a half. You've got your armor and stuff here. So down here is your resistances to various types of damage. So there's physical with the shield, there is um, energy, and then there's radiation damage. The X means the super mutant never takes radiation damage. He gets to roll under a one for, elect uh, for energy and under one for physical. Uh, and then all these symbols are different skills and people will do different things with different skills. So for instance, the super mutant for his uh, strength, uh, is it explosion? <laughs> what kind of attack is that? It is the heavy weapons are the nuke symbol. Uh, the fist is battle cry, so it's charge attack. Um, and then the knifey is melee attacks, he uses strength skill. For detecting, using handguns, using rifles, he uses perception. His hit points are based on his endurance. And then the ability to communicate is his charisma. And then down there, his throne is agility. So he throws agility. And the color of the agility is the range. He can throw up to blue. So he can throw things 10 inches using the agility stats. I have an awareness range, which is going to be green in this case. So he can react to and see things inside of green. Um, and then this stat over here, which is your prepare 
that that's, that's what you do when you prepare. So we're gonna set up our first mission here, which is the rescue of dog meat. It's called Troubled Beginnings. So dog meat's gonna up in the center of the table here. And for our forces, uh, Jason's gonna have Nora with a 10 millimeter pistol, which means you take that card, uh, the Soul Survivor Day One, and the 10 millimeter pistol card, and two settlers with hunting rifles. Uh, and they'll work off the same card. So as many of the nameless folk can be on the same card, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then that's your force. So it'll be these three models. I'll have a super mutant brute with a sledgehammer and two super mutants with bolt action pipe rifles and my doggy stay at home. Dog meat here is caught in one of the super mutant traps in the center of the table. Uh, we're gonna play a four turn game. And during that four turn game, uh, you're trying to free dog meat and kill all the super mutants. I am trying to empty my traps. You just came into my house and started kicking over all my stuff. So I have to place uh, four objective markers outside of black range, so 12 inches of dog meat. And I have to try and interact with them to empty the cages. So these are all like literally spike traps and stuff that I filled. And they can't be within 12 inches of each other either. So basically an X symbol, like so. And if I can make a strength test within orange range, two inches of any of these, they get removed from the table. It means I dump the blood bag into my pocket. Now, as soon as I destroy or uh, collect all of these, I win the game. If you collect dog meat, which is to say you get, uh, you spend an action within orange range of him and then kill a super means, we will win and it goes four turns. Now the person with advantage gets to activate the first model. I start with advantage because you're in my hometown. The game, I deploy all of my models within orange of dog meat. And everything is close edge, close edge in this game. So we're gonna go Mr. Hammer Time. We're gonna go Mr. Pipe Rifle. And then we're gonna go Mr. Pipe Rifle again, the sequel <laughs> over here. Any table edge and deploy your whole force within uh, orange of it, so within two inches. Flanking us, <laughs> coming to the side. All right, so um, I start with the advantage, it means I get to activate the first model. Now when you activate a model, you can do two things. You can ready a model, and you can choose to activate all ready models or just pass. And what that means is you can build up ready markers and have a whole bunch of people go at the same time. Now that's risky because I could also just get shot a whole bunch here. So I'm gonna go first, I'm gonna ready my super mutant brute and then he's gonna run like the Hounds of Hell are behind him. Now he has a move of, you can see here yellow, and everyone when they activate can take two actions unless they generate quick actions because of their skill rolls. Now I don't want to die, but I also know that your weapons get worse the closest that you go. So when you place your template to move, you actually in this game, move closest edge to farthest edge. You leapfrog the template, which is interesting. Um, Cause that's not a normal wargaming thing. Uh, and then we go again, and we're just gonna take cover over here and force the issue. And he's finished with his two moves and he'll become activated and it goes over to you. It's a ready marker and you can either activate right away or you can wait. And my brute's already gone. So you could just wait with a ready marker and activate two people in a row and see where I go. All right, I am going to activate this settler who is going to move up within the yellow. Okay. Uh, and then fire into that guy in the open. Oh no, so fire into my brute over here. Yep. So the way cover works is you count the number of pieces of terrain that you're not in contact between you and me. Uh, there's none in this case, so I won't have any penalties. So you roll equal to or under your perception. So what's the perception of your um, settler here? Six. Okay, and you wanna put your hunter rifle right here just so folks can see it. So you're firing outside of blue range, which is your normal range, and inside of blue plus black range, which means that you are firing with two green dice. So you get two dice plus the stat die, and you're rolling equal to or under whatever your perception is, which is six for yep. a settler. All right, so you roll an auto fail, unfortunately, which counts as a 10 or a 20, but you can't modify it. So even modified by these minus ones and minus twos, um, it doesn't succeed. So that's that first or second AP is gonna be a miss. Now let's say you'd rolled a 10 here, or let's say even a nine. It's still over your stat, but the minus three would have made it a six, which would have been a hit. So rolling the rolling the X is bad news bears because it's unmodifiable even by what you roll on your follow-up dice. Gain an activated marker, and it goes back over to me. We forgot to put down actually are these little guys. Every faction gets a faction bonus for playing that faction. The survivors get something called the survivor. They get a boost, which is um, your unique units get a boost two. Uh, and non-unique units get a boost one. That means they get plus one to whatever their saves are for each for uh, for a single hit, and this one will get plus one for uh, two hits, which is nice, because what happens is your bonus basically becomes um, 
uh, or your armor, or whatever your stat is. So in this case, like let's say to uh, physical damage, you'd be rolling equal to under a two for your armor check instead of a one. But then you discard it every time you're hit. Not if you're damaged, if you're hit, because it gets blown off. It's back to me. I have to decide if I want to do something or not. I think I'm gonna go, and I'm actually gonna move. So I'm gonna move. I move yellow if I want to move normally, but I can move orange and move through difficult terrain. I'm not going to bother moving through difficult terrain because I can't quite clear it, which means I'll just move yellow whoop, around the edge here for one, and I'll move yellow again over to here and stay within orange of that marker. He'll be done. He's the backfield defense. Over to you. All right, I'm going to activate this guy. And fire two shots into the closest super mutant. All right, so you're gonna shoot into the brute. Yes. Now the brute is in cover, so your perception of six six becomes four, and you're rolling because you're in blue range two yellow dice plus your stat dice, so four or less. So you get a ten becomes a nine, and we'll miss. It would negate one point of my armor though. You wanna try again? Yep. So you're on auto fail and two armor ranks, and well, unfortunately <laughs> the that. bullets go wild. Well, he is pretty scary. Yeah. Turn. I'm going to move. Now, unfortunately, I was an idiot and let dog meat block me in here. Or uh, I could just shoot Nora. Do I want to do that? Yeah. We're going to hop the wall here or just go over the difficult terrain, stay behind the box. And we're going to plug a shot in Nora in the open. Bolt action pipe rifle, and that is green plus blue. So green is my short range, and then blue is my long range. Up to there. So I'm in long range, and that means his stat die is going to be perception four, which I'm rolling equal to or under, uh, and you're not in any kind of cover. And I get to roll it with a uh, single black die, which is not the best, not the worst. So let's see what happens. Uh, so I get an auto fail, but I gain a quick action. Now, if I had hit, this was an extra point of damage, which means the damage normally of two would become three. Uh, so the quick action means I can gain a, uh, a cog token. Now I can use quick actions to become reactive, which I'll do. So he gains this. It probably won't do much in this case, but it means if someone activates within inside of my awareness, which is green, I can take any regular action against them. Overwatch. So you've got your last uh, model, which is going to be Nora. What's Nora want to do? Uh, she is going to open fire on that super mutant with her pistol. That makes sense. Good at blue range with the pistol. I think actually it's maximum range even is blue. Yes. So you're in range, but he's in cover. So what's your uh, perception? Perception five. Minus two is going to be three for the cover. So three or less, but you roll a green and a black. Nicely done. Well, unfortunately, you missed because you rolled a, a, an ax, but you do gain a quick marker, which you can become reactive with, which means that you could try and shoot later on. And you have a second AP, you can try and shoot again. Which I am going to do. There you go. So you get a three, which is a, a hit all on its own, becomes a one because of the minus two, and it does an extra damage. So your damage normally is two with the pistol. That's correct. And becomes three total. So now we have to make an armor check. Now my super mutant brute has a physical resistance of two. He rolls the armor dice. This looks like a D12. It's actually a D4. If he rolls equal to under his armor value, whatever I roll, that's how much the damage is reduced by. If I roll over my armor value, I just take the whole damage. So I roll a four, I roll over my armor value, means I take all three of those damage points. So I roll a spec, spec, He's got eight endurance, which means he can take five more before he dies. Right. Well, that's the round, so that's round one. Um, everyone's activated, dog meat will not activate until he is freed. So we go to round two. Now the person with the least models has the advantage, um, or it hands over to the person that didn't have the advantage last round, which will be you. So who wants to activate first in this motley crew? I'm going to start again with this survivor. So worth doing because Nora doesn't really want to go yet. She'd lose her reactive marker and it's kind of safe right now to let other people do things because she'll get to activate reactively. So what do you want to do? Uh, he's going to shoot. Uh, he's over blue. Yep. So it's two green dice. Yep. You'll know you, what we figured out so far is that green are good for accuracy and yellow are good for busting armor. So the hunting rifle is better at long range. So you're at minus two for cover, but you roll a critical hit, which means your critical meter fills up by one. You reduce my armor by one, so it goes to zero, and you do an extra damage. So my armor goes to zero, which means I can't stop it. I mean, there's no, no way I can't roll a zero on a D4. Um, and you do three damage to me. So I only have six damage, which means that if I take three more, I'm toast. I can't react to that because you're outside of my awareness range, which is green. Going again. Uh, and you hit again. 
And sorry, we need to remove all these activated markers because we forgot to. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you do a two damage. So a three becomes a two. So it means you still hit on your uh, perception of four right now, modified because of the cover. Uh, and you got this. Do you have any Nuka Cola crit things you can do? No, there's no wacky nope. stuff for the hunting rifle. Nope. So it's just two damage. I do get my armor though in this case. So if I can roll one or less, and I don't, I still take the two damage. I have one hit point left. Goes to five hits. Things are looking pretty grim. <laughs> I think it's time to try and shoot Nora. Do it over here, lose our reactive status, and just try and plug you. So uh, I have a perception of four, and she's in the open, but I only roll a stat die plus a black die with my bolt action pipe rifle over there. So let's see what I get. I get an extra damage and a nine, which will miss. I'll try one more time with my second action. I get an auto fail and a react. You're doing great, Super Mutant. So you get to go on to reactive. Not that it's gonna save you. It's activated out. You're gonna put a ready marker, which would actually be flipped like this until you're done. So yeah, he's going to- Are you gonna activate right away? Yes. Okay. Uh, so he's gonna shoot into Super Mutant there. So shoot way over here. Okay, so there is one, two piece of train between us now. So your perception is gonna go down to two. And you get a seven, becomes a six, so it misses. Second shot. You get a six, becomes a five, so it misses. That flips over. One in Brute, a two Brute. So Brute gets to charge green. So he's gonna charge into Nora. Charge around the corner here. Don't have to charge in a straight line, boom. And that means he gains the charge bonus. Now you can spend your reaction though, at the end of my move to shoot me. You're gonna have to melee me though. Action, the active uh, model's action resolves and then the reactive model resolves. I think you can actually move out of melee with me though. Sorry, you can shoot me um, because when you react to a charge, you don't count as being in melee until uh, after reaction is over. So you're inside a blue, which means you roll for the pistol. I think it's green, black. Yep. Against your perception. So you get an auto fail, but you get a quick action, which means you get to go back into reactive if you want. I, which I will. <laughs> um, and sorry, but you don't do that until you activate. So you gain a quick action point. And actually, you don't gain bonus AP during a reaction. So you actually don't get the uh, the, the quick thing. You only, you only get it when you're acting, which kind of makes sense because then you can't react to a reaction or anything like that. So he'll make his melee attack now. A bonus green plus black die to my next attack action when I charge. So I am strength eight for my attack. I'm attacking on an eight here, and I'm using a sledgehammer, which gives me two yellow dice automatically and does two damage base. Plus I get a green and a black from the charge. Here we come, Nora. Shablam. All right, so I get a bonus action. I crack your armor by two. I have no trigger for the Nuka Cola, and it becomes damage three. So damage three, your armor gets reduced down to uh, you're it plus starts at you're three, plus two. Plus, plus one, it's plus one actually. Because oh, it's two instances of plus one, yeah. So your armor four right now goes to two. Do you roll two or less? You don't, so you take all three damage. Armor boost goes down to a one, because you've taken a hit. And that's Mr. Brute done. What you gonna do? There's actually a thing called a slide in a melee too. So if I, and this is, I, I'm not gonna do it now because it wouldn't have worked, but if I was actually able to touch both your bases, I could engage the other model by sliding. So at the end of a close combat attack, you can move your model up to its base movement as long as it stays in melee with a model who's fighting. So that might be important for you right now because you could move around if you decide to melee me or you can move around by breaking off. Use your pistol in melee, but you count as being, I count as being in cover. So you're minus two to shoot me and uh, I have plus one of my armor value. Okay. You try and do it? Oh yeah. All right, so your stat is automatically failed because you rolled an X, but it would have been a five minus two is three. So a three or less, but you failed. Do you want to try again? Now you can, do your, you can do your quick action movement if you want to. Regardless of whether or not you hit me, you can still make your free move to slide around base to base contact. And how far is that? It's whatever go? your base movement is. So you can move yellow basically. So like you could move over to here to at least like be in cover a little bit from somebody else. Yep. Or whatever. Yeah, slide Let's around. Okay, and try again. Uh, and you get an automatic quick action afterwards, which means you'll get a reaction when this is all over. Uh, and you hit, because that counts as a one. So you do plus one damage to whatever your base damage is. And your base so damage two. is two goes to three, but I get plus one armor. So my armor becomes three against physical right now. So I roll four though and fail. Ah, oh, hang time. So I'm gonna take that three damage and have two left. And you're done. Sorry, I got six on me now, that's fine. Yep. You, you. I should have six on me, I took three and three. So you could actually do another free quick move too if you want and slide around, as long as you stay in base to base. 
just gonna come to this side. All here. right, to go then. So uh, I have one screaming left. He's gonna try to make a strength test on a six or less to try and break open this cage. And he fails, so he has to try again. And he fails. <laughs> First thing he's gonna do that in two actions, he's done. Um, and that's round two, so we're going around three. All right, we have the same number of models left, so I have the advantage this turn, which means I get to activate first. And I think we need to try and crush Nora before she crushes us. He's gonna straight up melee with the sledgehammer. So, uh, two yellows and the stat die. He is strength eight. Try and slam, and you've got, sorry, he should have, that should be flipped. He should have six on him. So he's gonna try and hit you with a sledgehammer. So rolling less than eight. Uh, crushes it, and it becomes damage three. So you have to make your armor roll. Now you do get plus one to your armor right now, so your armor should be four. And you can hit me back after this too. So you do, so your armor boost goes away and you reduce the damage by three, so no damage. Do you react by trying to hit me back? I am definitely gonna react by trying to hit you back. All right, go for it. So I count as being cover again, so it's a three or less to hit. And you crit me and you minus one my armor. So I'm only armor one right now. And this could kill me unless I block this. I have to roll a one or I die. No, nope, I roll a four and he's dead. He takes two damage, that's it. Crit meter goes up by one as well. Well, that didn't work out. I am going to start by activating this guy here. Okay, so you get a ready marker. Yeah, not flipped yet. You got it. And you can try and activate. So make a ranged combat attack. You're outside of blue. Uh, so you need to roll a four because he's in cover. But you got a six minus two, which makes it a hit. So four uh, or less, your damage is two with that rifle. Uh, he's armor one. I believe two because he's in cover. I keep forgetting the, the cover armor bonus. So two or less. And he passes, he reduces by one. That's still enough to kill him though, because he already had five damage on him. Second action. Oh, he's, he's just out of range. Out of range. <laughs> About like an inch. <laughs> and I guess you could move. Only move orange to hop the rubble. Head towards dog meat. Buddy, I don't think we're winning this one, but we're gonna try and complete the objective of popping this. And we do, barely. Whoop, so that one gets destroyed. And we'll sit and make a second action move. I think you're gonna free dog meat and I'm gonna clear two of these and then the game's gonna end. <laughs> Nora and one settler left, so I guess she's gonna run. Oh, Nora's gonna go, gonna go for it. Going yellow, and then second AP going yellow again. Here, pooch. You just got one settler remaining. You can also take a walk if you'd like. Might as well. I see what you do. Round four, well, conveniently I get to go first, <laughs> but it's not gonna help very much. I might just try and kill Nora for spite. Kill Nora for spite, we're doing it. We're walking over here, going up to that, and we're gonna have one piece of terrain in the way, because I'm touching this one, whoops. So, it'll be minus two, so I need to hit you on a two or less. Black plus stat die, because we're outside of blue range, so let's see if we get a two or less. And we don't, <laughs> we just miss you. So, uh, you get to go and do your rescue dog meat and kill me, that's the plan. Got it. Gonna go walk up. She's coming forward. Okay, and then automatically free dog meat. So he joins your army, or joins your team rather, with his dog bite skill. Now dog meat is crazy fast and crazy good at killing things. <laughs> so it's all you, buddy. So dog meat can move if you want. Go sick him on my poor super mutant. Shoot me first, which is probably wiser because you need to get some damage on me and you can't shoot me once I'm in melee. Make some shots, so if you do this way, if this one moves first, there'll only be one piece of terrain in the way. Two pieces of terrain, actually, right now, because right now there's one, two, three, which means you need to crit to hit me. This one's got one, two, three as well. Uh, so... They both have to move. They both have to crit, basically. <laughs> but this one will be easier if you... You need two or less if you move to the cover first. So walk over to the... Thing. You just need to touch it, right? Because then it doesn't count against you. There you go, perfect. Like a shot. So it's the cover I'm hiding behind, plus this piece of terrain. So minus two, minus four, uh, two or less. And you get it with a crit, and it's three damage. Um, and you don't have any specials to activate with that Nuka Cola. Nope. So three damage. I'm armored two because I'm in cover. One plus one. And we pass one, so we only take two damage. Three points left. Again. You move up till he's not behind the yep. locker. Gotcha. So you've got one. Uh, two pieces, so again, two or less. And it's double green, and it's not time you crit me again! And it's minus one armor! Ah, armor one! Now I fail, so I take two points, and he goes to four damage. Ouch! Right in the, right in the green! And then I guess he can stick dog meat on me. <laughs> so you charge blue, and you have line of sight, which means you're just gonna wrap around to there. Bark, bark! And then you make your charge attack. Dog meat rolls all the dice! When you get to charge off, and you get a, you get a hit, so you get a quick action after this. Um, and then you do plus two damage, 
and then minus one armor. And you can activate this to give me an arm injury if you want as well. No, that's uh, that's the blind one. Oh, that's the, okay, that's the, my awareness goes away. Great, I'm blind. So damage four and minus one armor, which makes me armor zero. So I just explode because I only have six hit points. Blam! And dog meat eats me in a totally, totally appropriate ending. They free the dog meat. He turns on his captors and eats everybody. So there you go, an overview of the core rules of Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Now there is tons more to this game, obviously. Um, I'm probably going to record some games. The AI mode is a follow-up to this, so you can see how it works. And also means I can play games and not eat an opponent, which is kind of neat too. It'd be one of the second or third times we've gotten to do that. Um, and of course, the narrative play and the campaign play too, as like, right now we just have the starter set basically, and I have a few of the character models, but no cards for them, so we can't really, I can't do much more than what we're doing right now, um, is which is play through the narrative missions from the book. Uh, but then once more stuff comes in, I have more factions and the all the like NPC stuff, we'll play through and start probably a campaign of our own, and hopefully more people locally. I know Jay's picking it up, um, which means we'll have more people actually playing and building stuff as well. So I wanna give sort of like an overview of this. I have, it's funny, because this week I've played a whole bunch of IP driven games, so games that are based on properties that already exist out there in the world. Um, and I, there's something I really like about this one that I think Fallout provides just by its own nature that some of the other ones don't, whereas this one has a, this one has a lot of player created possibility as opposed to a lot of times when you're playing an IP based game, you can only go as far as what's written in the books or in the movies or whatever, things like Star Wars, um, the Song of Ice and Fire game, you're a bit, you're a bit constrained by what's been written about because when you're dealing with an IP, you have to follow the rules of life. You can't make new stuff, you can't create. But the nature of Fallout is that you create your own story. The Soul Survivor doesn't really have a name. Like it does in the story and stuff, but it's a template to make your characters on. So everything exists in this box, and you didn't see it, but there's like literally, Jay and I were looking through it before, there's everything from Fallout. There's stim packs and Rataway and different guns, plasma rifles, mini guns, different types of power armor and stealth boys. You can customize your miniatures however you want. So I think this is great because this game, I think, is gonna have a lot of replayability based on the fact that I can go and make my existing post-apocalyptic collection kind of fit my vision of Fallout. And we can do what we always do, which is we take it and we make our own sort of corner of the Fallout universe. The NPCs are there, all the characters are there to be able to come around and like add your adventures, but you're not stuck playing the characters from the story, basically. And I, I really like that. I think that's very Fallout. I think they've really nailed the feel of the game. Um, it is very granular. Jay and I kind of went, what? When we saw the tokens, there's a lot of tokens. <laughs> yeah, so many tokens. <laughs> there's a bit of that. Uh, there's a bit of that like squinting and trying to figure out what stuff does. But I think if you go in through the the missions in this box set, which are the play us first missions, like the narrative missions, like well, the yeah. one we just did, you get uh, they they ease you into them a little bit. And by the end of it, like our our first game took like how long? Uh, like an hour, like an hour and a half, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> and it was the same mission. And our second game, we were rolling. We knew what we were doing. We could recognize like the ranges and stuff. And more importantly, looking at like the stack cards, like the sledgehammer, the pipe rifle, we could kind of see how they worked and where like the good ranges were, the bad ranges were, the advantage of taking them and stuff like that too. Um, and so yeah, so I'm really, I'm really excited about this game. I think it's got tons of potential. Uh, I love the way there's lots of different ways to play it, and I'm excited about all the different ways to play too. If people want to come in and play, like pick up games, a battle mode, we'll be able to do that. If people want to come in and play a campaign, obviously I've got all my locals that we do, we just love Fallout and do this stuff anyway. So we'll be able to run like a settlement campaign and run our settlements and stuff too. Um, and just by getting some kind of appropriate bases, I can make my own stuff. So I'm already, I've already painted my T60 power armor to be a sole survivor, so it's in like the US Army colors. I can, I have a reason to hack up lots of these models, like my doubles and stuff, and make different weapons yep. and different equipment options and stuff like that too. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Big thanks Jason for once again, going through and doing another game with us um, and bearing with the, the me teaching people how to play. And big thanks guys for watching. We'll see you for more Fallout to the Mash. Have a great night. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.